welcome back to the man channel as we have deemed it this week the mania amplified news center this will be your home for all things wrestlemania updates breaking news the hottest topics and news stories in the community when it comes to wrestlemania this is your one-stop shop this morning we will be jumping into the world of Wrestlemania ticket sales. It's a special report video and we're going to crack down the numbers. The results that we have found and uncovered might stun you, may even shock you, but perhaps it shouldn't when you've seen the trajectory of this company over the last 10 years. You see, Vince McMahon could have went the easy route, which is the route that all of us fans wanted the road to WrestleMania that would have been best for the wrestlers themselves, the talent, and the company at large. And it's a crazy concept. Build larger-than-life stars, have them partake in long-term captivating storytelling, and have the feud culminate at the pay-per-view, in this case, WrestleMania. And what we hope would be the first meeting ever between the participants. First time ever we are seeing the match between these larger-than-life wrestlers who have just partaken in a multi-month long-term captivating story. No, you see what Vince did, Vince went the other route. He put no care and effort into it yet again. And he relied on celebrities, rematches, Stars from the past. You don't got to take my word for it, but the proof is in the pudding. The facts are laid out for you. If you take a look at night one of WrestleMania, as it stands right now, you will see that your two main matches for night one of WrestleMania this Saturday night, five nights away, by the way, your two main matches are rematches. Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch for the Raw Championship. And... Ronda Rousey, Charlie Flair, the Blue Brand Women's Championship. Those are both rematches, of course, and those are your main matches. Aside from that, you have Drew McIntyre versus Happy Baron Corbin and Shinsuke Nakamura tagging up with Rick Boogs to take on the Usos. That's the whole night. And then you have the Kevin Owens show with special guest Steve Austin. And as it stands right now, then we go off the air. Now, last minute, they're going to throw on a match or two, but with no long-term story build, nobody's going to give a shit. That's your night number one. So, you go the celebrity route, right? Those are the rematches that you're going to get in night number one. Then you go the celebrity route. Logan Paul. John Knoxville. Even my boy Pat McAfee gets a match. So did it all work? Instead of building larger-than-life superstars, you're going to bring back an old-timer like Austin. When you put all of this together, celebrities, rematches, and old-time larger-than-life stars, not new, does it work? We're going to pull back that curtain. We're going to break down that fourth wall. We're going to look at the ticket sales. And while the WrestleMania ones might stun you, the Raw after Mania and those ticket sales, that's where you may be shocked. So I don't think there's any, any use wasting any more time. I say right now, we let the facts speak for themselves. Now again, disclaimer. These numbers in this special report video, these are from the latest projections we have, which is early Monday morning, March 28th, five nights. I almost said four. It's, it's going to creep up on us. Five nights away from WrestleMania, as it stands right now, Saturday night, night one. These numbers you're about to see are from early this morning, March 28th, five nights away from Mania. So again, let's, let's just let the facts be for themselves. So once again, guys, I want to reiterate, these are the latest ticket on sales as of March 28th, early Monday morning. We are five nights away from night one 
of WrestleMania. And what you are viewing right now on the screen is the night one ticket on sales still available. So this is all night number one. You can clearly see wherever you want to sit in the house, it is available, man. Uh, you could sit still anywhere on the floor, basically. Uh, anywhere up the rampway, either side. You got the high rises, the secondary high rises. You can go all the way up to any tier. These are all just luxury boxes, I believe. Let me make sure here. Yeah, the, the suites, suites and boxes. Um, nothing is going to be available there. Either they're all taken or they're just off limits. Uh, there could be any number of reason for certain boxes to be off limits, but anything else it's, it's fair game. And to just give you just an indication of how many seats there is. I mean, it's not just like a couple of seats here, uh, in section C13, you see there's 14 tickets available there. You go over to C12, 15 tickets. You go to C308, 43 tickets. You go to 318, you got 10. Go to 409 in the high rise, 75. 406, you got 40. 404, 27. Let's go to 144, 26. 344, 96 tickets, guys. This shit adds up to hundreds. And I want to show you guys, man, over here exactly what I mean. Right now, I got the search as two tickets. So you can obviously just imagine what that would be for single tickets. The, the search would change up. Three tickets. There's a shit ton of three ticket options. But let's just go two tickets. This is all the options. You ready for this? Watch how, how many. Here we go. Look at all this. Look at all this, man. This is all the available two ticket options, man. So this isn't just like it's a straggling ticket here and there in each section. No, these are multiple tickets together. We're still going. Look at this, man. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? Five nights away, man. And you say, well, BC, I mean, it's a big stadium. Guys, you have no idea. I mean, usually WrestleMania is much more... Um, I, I let me put it this way. WWE has always inflated their numbers, but you usually don't see this. And trust me, I do this every single year and I've never seen anything like this. We're still going guys. This is a two ticket option. We're still going. <laughs> this is insane, man. I haven't even done a single ticket option, which is a, a host of, you know, that's just like one ticket without somebody next to it. Finally, we reached the top. So that went on for a good minute. Let's go back to the actual mapping. So again, guys, if you switch it over to like one ticket, that means that they don't have another ticket to offer. But if you're going by yourself, you know, that's usually going to be another couple hundred there. Some people are only selling three or even a family four pack. So they don't want to sell just one or two or even three. They want to sell all four. So you got to figure that's another 50 to 100. I'm being generous. Um... And it equals, when it's all said and done, guys, it equals thousands of tickets. I'm not even including the StubHub and the 10 other black market sites on the interweb machine. Um, sometimes, you know, you have a lot of resales that Ticketmaster can do in conjunction with sites like StubHub. But uh, a lot of tickets you can only get through like a StubHub or a Vivid Seats, things like that. Um, that Ticketmaster will not simultaneously put up for sale. So my point is you could get another several hundreds of resale tickets on those third-party sites. And then you add in the actual scalpers the night of. Now on a typical arena show, you could have anywhere from 10 to 20 reputable scalpers. I know that sounds odd. Scalpers should not be called reputable, but they do it for a living. So, you know, as shady as it is, you know, you're going to get accurate, accurate tickets for your money. And on an arena show, you can usually peg it at about 10 to 20. And they usually at least each have about 25 to 50 tickets up front. So you're obviously going to triple at the bare minimum that for WrestleMania, put that to about, 
anywhere from 50 to 60 scalpers. And let's just say they each have 20 tickets. Um, that's over a thousand tickets right there, guys. So my point is, what's my conclusion here? <laughs> Several thousands of tickets are still unaccounted for. Yes, they were purchased, but they were flipped right back onto the third party market. So that's not guaranteeing at all that those seats are going to be filled with asses. WWE probably doesn't give a shit because they're going to make the gate on it. Again, this is telling me that they might not even though. I mean, some of these tickets, a lot of them are not resale. So unless they can get that, they won't even pull the gate that they're hoping for. And if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, of course, WrestleMania 32, six years ago, was in this exact arena, the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. And WrestleMania 32, when it was last in this stadium, it supposedly set a new attendance record with 101,763 fans. Of course, this beat out WrestleMania 3 in the Pontiac Silver Dome, Silver Dome which legit filled 93,173 fans. I'll always remember that because that record stood the test of time. That record should have never been broken uh, unless there was some shady business going on. And back then, you didn't have resale like you did today with the internet. I mean, that's why we call that a legit hard sell. 93,173 WrestleMania 3 Pontiac Silverdome. Uh, and then WrestleMania 32 came along, and with the help of the resale market, uh, and in just inflated numbers every which way <laughs> you turned, exaggerated numbers by WWE, and all of a sudden you hit 101,763. Now, there's just one huge problem with this, guys. According to the Arlington Police Department, the actual attendance was 80,709 for WrestleMania 32. That is a difference of 21,000 fans. So WWE touted the success of a new record at 101,763, but the Arlington Police Department said 80,709 was actually in attendance. Now this is what happened here. WWE, they absolutely pulled the revenue at the gate coming in at a staggering $17.3 million in ticket sales, which guys, till this very day, is the highest grossing gate in professional wrestling history. That again was made six years ago, this very stadium, WrestleMania 32. So that's what WWE did, guys. They counted the gate. Everything seemed to be in check. And they went ahead and announced 101,000 plus as a new record. They knew damn well that that was not the asses that were in seats. They knew damn well that what you're seeing right here on your screen, that this was the case back six years ago. It wasn't this bad. This is even worse than it was six years ago, uh, this many seats. But it was pretty bad. But WWE took their gate and they thought that they could... Uh, they could announce an exaggerated number. They do this every year for every WrestleMania. That's that's not shocking or surprising. What was shocking was the amount that they went over the record. They knew the record was 93. I think they knew if they announced 96, 97, people were going to start raising suspicion. You beat the record by only four or 5,000 from WrestleMania 3. That's bullshit. But if they went over 100,000, they wanted that shit. You're talking the Super Bowl, which brought in records and all that previous, too, from this very stadium. So Vince wanted to top all of it. And that's why you got such an inflated number six years ago for 32. Um, if I guess my point is, if they try that bullshit this year, um, none of you should take that uh, as a real number, take it with many grains of salt because it's bullshit. Um, there is no way they're even eclipsing 100,000. They're not even going to pull in 90. And realistically, if they pulled in 75,000 legit, that would probably be a uh, success for Vince McMahon at this point. It's a major failure in the grand scheme. He was hoping for much better. But if you can pull 75 with what I'm viewing right now, knowing that they only pulled 80,000 six years ago, if you could pull 75, you run and you don't look back if your name is Vince McMahon. Now, guys, I want to show you real quick, too. That's This is night one that I've been showing you. This is night two. It's not much different. You do have sales, by the way, that you can buy both WrestleMania one and two. 
um, or just buy them as single event. But this is night number two. You can see it's not that much different. There is some sections that are um, a little better than others, and then others are just not doing so great. Like you see, <laughs> well, here's you got two tickets there, and then right next door, you're going to have a pretty empty section. There's still 52 there. Right next to the door, you have even more, 68. <laughs> this little section right here, you see 232? 50, hold on, check this out. Right next to this white part here, you see C332. There's, guys, there's 54 tickets right there, man. 68 right here at C33. I mean, come on, man. I'm just giving you little batches. C132, 36 over here on the on the little high risers. 133 has 28. Eight right here. Well, let's go back to 128. Two there. That's not too bad. A hundred plus in 127, guys. Whoa. 126 has 10. So right there, that's a buck 10. Buck 12. A hundred plus in 129. 212. Almost 250. 275. Guys, there is close to 300 tickets available in this little circle right here. You see where? That's like 300 tickets almost. I'm not even going to go through all the. My point is there's thousands for night number two as well. I'll show you two just like we did for night one. Um, we'll just go through again. The, the, the option that I have up here, guys, is two tickets. So this isn't just like it's one ticket here and there. This is bulk packages. You can bring a friend, bring a family. Look at all of these tickets. We're going to be here for a minute. Just like night number one, this is what we did. This is not even the third-party sites that have so many other tickets available that Ticketmaster does not run in conjunction with. We have to go a little faster here, guys. This, this video will be a half an hour. I can't believe this. <laughs> Look at that. This is insane, guys. I have to stop. I have to stop. There, there's so much more, as you can see. But I have to... Uh, I mean, there's just there's thousands of tickets... Um, still up for grabs. Some resales, some literally have not even been purchased for the third party sites or for resale. Um, so this is, I mean, they're in, in bad shape. You say, well, BC, man, it's hard to fill a stadium like that. Guys, this is WrestleMania. They started the ticket process really a year ago when they started putting plans in the place. And then the ticket sales themselves has been months and months you, you bulked it to two days. You're bringing in Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're, you're, you're touting the John Knoxvilles and the Logan Pauls and the Pat McAfee's. You're, you're trying to go celebrity style instead of bringing putting actual champions on your card like your IC champion, your US champion. No, those don't matter. But it doesn't look like the celebrity approach is working. It doesn't even look like Stone Cold can save the day. And this is what happens when... You know, you, you, you think your fans are going to stick around. You see your ratings drop every year. Monday Night Raw, for instance, every year for the past six years, they're losing nearly 300,000 viewers per year. Within two years, that'll put them right around, around 1 million in viewership. That's not good when you've been around three decades nearly as a show. And then you look at attendance. There's a big reason why Vince McMahon doesn't do a lot of house shows anymore. He knows there's no more, there's no more revenue in it. People are not showing up. So he's getting his money from streaming services and from countries that are willing to play, pay him tens of millions of dollars, networks that are willing to pay him a billion dollars like Fox for, for SmackDown. But once the ratings dip even lower and lower, those networks are no longer going to pay that money. The streaming services will have already sucked every bit of content from you, so they're not going to give you another dime. And no other country will give you even one million, let alone tens of millions, because you will no longer be worth it. So Vince McMahon is sitting pretty right now because he's basically liquidating. But this, what you're seeing for night one and night two, this is uh, highly alarming. And no matter how much they try to exaggerate the numbers, uh, just know that they are in a world of shit. And I'm going to give you guys even a bigger, um, I was going to say outlook, but I'm going to take you into the depths of misery that Vince is about to be in over the next few years because I'm about to show you uh, the ticket on sale for Monday Night Raw, the Raw after 
WrestleMania. This is always a legit hard sell immediately. There's times that the Raw after Mania sells out before Mania. I'm going to take you guys into these ticket sales as of this morning, Monday morning, five nights away from WrestleMania. You guys are going to be stunned by this. Give me one second. We're going to switch over. All right, guys. So what you're reviewing now is the Monday Night Raw on sale for Monday, April 4th. This is the biggest Raw of the year. It's deemed it's the Raw after Mania. We usually have a raucous, wild crowd. We usually have some debuts, returning wrestlers. Uh, it's usually a chaotic atmosphere. Everyone loves to be at this Raw. It's usually the, uh, the, the biggest party of the year when you're talking Raw. And that's saying something because usually it's a snooze fest. <laughs> but uh, this is the one where people, uh, again, many years, this sells out way before uh, WrestleMania. And that's usually because it is at a smaller arena. Yes, that is part to do with it. This is the same thing. This is not... Uh, in Arlington at the AT&T Stadium. This is at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. So this is at a smaller arena. The capacity for pro wrestling is roughly 20,000 seats. So it's a 20,000 seat capacity. Now, right out of the gate, guys, you're going to see all this gray. That's not people that, that's they didn't just sell out. That's not just people bought tickets to this side first. <laughs> this is the staging area where you're going to have the Tron. This is the ramp. All back here, everything you see in gray, that's all tarped off for the staging area. Everything behind it, um, that's for WWE's own purposes and just the fact that it would be such an obstructed view, it wouldn't even be worth it. So this is all just non-existent. You cannot buy any tickets in this area. This will all be tarped. This is all for the staging. So you have to count right from the gate. Uh, one fourth at least of the arena is off limits. So roughly you're down to 15,000 potential tickets now. I I'm estimating, but as you can see, this is at least one fourth of the arena tarped off. Uh, and then you go into little things like you see six, section 118. It's the only section that's gray for some reason in a sea of blue. And then you hit 118. That's the hard cam. This is where Kevin Dunn's people are going to be right here so they can film raw for all of us. Camera's going to be right there. So 118, they usually have a shit ton right here. It's all just tarped off. And a lot of times they'll just tarp the whole section, especially if they think they can't get a sellout, which this is one of those occasions. If they think they can sell out, sometimes you'll just see the whole middle of the section, like in this case, 118, the whole middle will just have many rows for production alone. And then they'll still fill in some, some seats in front and behind. But in this case, it looks like they're just totally going to tarp that off. Um... Now, this is, this is kind of odd. 16, that's actually the floor. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not some seats there, but this is also where, because this is hard cam side, this is where the McMahon family, all the families of the wrestlers, everybody who came down that's a VIP uh, for WWE, and there's a lot of them come WrestleMania. They're all going to be in this section, and that's because they don't, or at least Vince production, they, they don't want them to be on TV, and I don't think they want to be on TV because, again, it's the families of the superstars and the suits and ties. So because it's the hard cams here, all these people are going to be on TV um, and these guys won't. That's why if you ever watch Monday Night Raw, you're going to see like, you know, yeah, OK, these guys are on TV. And then once they come around here, if they're fighting on the outside, this is where you're going to see a lot of VIPs. The Rock's mama will be around here. <laughs> Some of the McMahon's, Shane McMahon's kids will be around here. So that's probably why you see that totally grayed out and uh, not available because everything else. It's available, man. I'm going to take you in depth a little bit and show you how many tickets because it's a lot. And with the arena, it's kind of cool because you can get an exact, um, you, you can actually see the, the seats available. And if, I mean, some of these sections, guys, it's complete rows, man. Complete rows, basically. I mean, we're one week away from this raw. They have to fill up almost complete sections, dude. Look at over here. That's a complete section almost. As you can see, man, it's take you kind of around it. Take a little tour around the uh, <laughs> the upper decks. I mean, these are all. I mean, if you want to take a trip down to Dallas, I mean, if you thought, oh, I wonder if there's any tickets left, guys, there's a lot left. 
All over the place, man. You can have any seat in the house, you know? On the floor, I mean, I, I, this, this is stunning right here. The, the, the floor section on one of the sides of the ramp, I mean, half the section at least is still up for grabs. Upper deck, you see a lot more up here too. I mean, I mean that's, yeah, let me zoom out. Get a, just a, a big picture of it all. So m my point is, guys, this gives you a glimpse on, on just how much of a world of shit the product really is. Um, because I'll say this again. This was the show where you would sell this out before Mania uh, nearly every year. And to see this like this is so sad, man. I'll let you guys see what I showed you at the Mania, too. I still have the, uh, the option as two tickets. And you just see how many. Just to show you an actual, <laughs> actual listing format. I mean, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. We'll be here for minutes. And again, guys, I have to say, this isn't even the third party sites like the Stub Hubs and the Vivid, Vivid Seats and the Cheap Seats and all of those sites. Uh, that have a lot of tickets that are not shown in resale for Ticketmaster. That's all legit third party. So you have to count the hundreds and hundreds of those. The scalpers that are going to be in attendance for WrestleMania easily could be 500 to another thousand. Uh, and my point is there's a few thousand seats that are unaccounted for one week before the biggest Raw of the year. Not a thousand, which would still be highly concerning to BC, given the type of raw this is. Thousands, when all is said and done, and you put up all the third parties, the actual scalpers there in attendance that night, and what you are viewing right now, which is hundreds up front. Um, Monday Night Raw, and this just shows you, man. There's so many tickets available, and it was never this bad in past years. And again, I know this because I do this every year. Um, just because I'm a numbers guy and I love breaking down the stats, the statistics, the numbers, the revenue. Um, so this is big, man. This gives you a glimpse that uh, Vince McMahon still has a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do five nights before WrestleMania night one. A lot of work to do one week away from Monday Night Raw. And uh, I, I think he knows this information or he, he should be pr privy to it by now. And uh, hopefully that lights a fire up under his ass and we get a good Monday Night Raw tonight. Get people more excited and maybe a lot of these seats will actually be filled. Because again, you see this pink. These are all resales, guys. If, if those people cannot resell those tickets for, you know, they're trying to make extra money, 10, 20, 50, 100, 300 extra bucks. If they can't sell it, all these seats just remain empty. Interesting. This is a rough, rough several maps that I am viewing for Vince McMahon. So there you have it. An event that you would think people would be excited about. Can't wait for it to come. They've had tickets for months. Unfortunately, that's not the case. At a time when people are begging for a reason to get out of the house. After the last two years, they've been building this up. You see in Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, they're reporting record amounts of people every day. There was no off-peak season, no off-peak week in Walt Disney World and Universal this year. The vloggers down there in Florida, they've never seen anything like this. Records amounts of people. People don't even care about how many people they're around these days. They're done with it. They're over it. They just want to get out. Give them a reason. We're seeing it. Super Bowls all the way to playoff games to regular games, man. People are packing these arenas and stadiums. But not WrestleMania. Not WrestleMania. And this is what happens when you, the company, does not care and does not put your best foot forward. You rely on the rematches. You rely on celebrities. You rely on stars from the past. And what you end up doing is you bite yourself in the ass. I said it 
In recent reports over the last 48 hours, I'll say it again, I, I truly believe that Vince McMahon has lost control of the event. And even more sadly, I believe Vincent Kennedy McMahon, VKM, the old bastard in Stamford, Connecticut, I believe he has lost control of his company. Yes, he's, he's bringing in those record revenues, but that can only last so long. We say it all the time. He's liquidating everything that he has built over the last several decades. Now he is liquidating it. Right, he, he sold everything to Peacock. Basically, that library is sitting in their lap with the Peacock network or streaming service. It's no longer the WWE Network. No, he sold that thing right off. The billion-dollar deal he got with Fox for SmackDown. Well, when the ratings dip and dip and dip, do you think SmackDown's going to give him another billion-plus? It's not going to happen. USA Network, they're losing 300,000 viewers every year for the past six years. Now, when they get around a million, do you think the USA Network is going to give them that big payday? It's not going to happen. Do you think a country like Saudi Arabia will give them tens of millions of dollars when the interest is so low... You'd rather take your morning shit for an extra six minutes than watch a WWE segment. I mean, these are sad words to hear, but this is what we're getting at. So he's liquidating. He's having the best two years financially of his career. WWE is skyrocketing because of those revenues. It's not because of viewer interest, because again, the ratings are showing you a downward trajectory. The ratings are showing you that people are no longer tuning in. Live events are basically canceled by McMahon, not because he's doing his wrestlers a favor and he's going to give them days off. It's because nobody was showing up to the live events. It was actually becoming less than 50% capacity was showing up to live events. So they're basically canceled only one or two every now and again in a given month. That's what we're down to. And then you're even pay-per-views like WrestleMania. Can't even sell out. Not one of the nights. Night number two, you would think, okay, it's a little more stacked than night number one. No, not even close. Nearly the same amount of empty seats. That will, A lot of them will not have asses in them because they are resale. And it's just not going to be resold. So this is where we're at. This is what happens when you don't do business correctly for your fans. When you're only thinking about the bottom dollar, those dollars will eventually run out. You give it within the next two years, I've been saying this, by the end of 2024 especially, this WWE is going to look a lot different. And I don't even know if McMahon will be at the, the helm at that point. But these numbers are not good. I'm not saying it's a state of panic for WWE or this is a, a, a tragic situation in terms of tickets for WWE. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this is the start of something bad for McMahon in WWE. These numbers are unlike anything we've seen before at a time where people, again, are begging to get out, to spend their money on something like this. You just got to give them a reason. It's not a state of panic. It's not saying it's a tragedy. What it is, is it's really bad. It's not good for the company. Vince knows this. And hopefully they learn from this and in the future get back to larger than life superstars, long term stories that captivate us, and the feuds culminating at the pay per view. And hopefully, if you've done it correctly, it's a match at a pay per view we've never seen before. There's a crazy concept. My name's BC Amplified. This has been a special report vid inside the numbers, inside those ticket sales. And until next time. All things WrestleMania, you've come to the right place. The Man Channel, the Mania Amplified News Center. But for now, BC Amplified is signing off. Same.